We're good. This is live, right? Oh, hello. I think we're live. I hope we're live. And as long as we are, welcome to uh, Talk About It Tuesday, special home edition, special home brew edition. I'm going to walk you through my homebrew setup just because, I mean, now is the time that you get to take advantage of all your hobbies, get a little more time at home. And I actually am at my mom's house right now. As you can see, is a nice uh, setup right here. Really, truly the best setup I have ever gotten to experience as a home brewer. And I'll go over kind of why that is. But yeah, I just wanted to run you through my setup here. I'll give you a little quick rundown of how home brewing happens, a really brief overview. Maybe this is something that we can grow on a little bit in the future so that, you know, if people are interested in home brewing, there's a lot of information like this out there, though. Home brewing exploded a while ago. And so you can find this. I might not be super unique, but what might be unique is my setup and what I have going on. Before I get too deeply into that, welcome again. Thank you so much for joining us. We like to do interesting stuff like this, so I would definitely encourage you to subscribe. If you find this interesting in any way, throw us a like. Throw, hit that little heart. Why not? Because that would make us feel good. It would get me right here in the heart in the field. So that would be super cool. By the way, if you do subscribe and you send us a screenshot of you subscribing and whatever, send it to us and we will send you some swag. That is still happening. You get cool hats, cool other stuff, maybe a shirt. I don't know. It's the kind of the look of the draw. And so let's get into let's get into this setup here. So I have what is called a uh, it's it's done by gravity as opposed to there being pumps. So you would see at your typical giant craft home brewing place, a lot of tanks that are all together. You're not going to see something like this because this is what you do at home. And so I built this very sturdy, definitely not shoddy at all, uh, gravity supply setup here and a little overview. I have up here, this is called the hot liquor tank. Essentially, it's just where you put hot water. You heat the water up here, you feed it down into this guy, come in close. By the way, my very lovely wife, Rachel, is filming this, thank you. And hopefully it's not too spotty because we're a little in North Escondido, so I can't be, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm not on Wi-Fi, and so bear with me if it's a little choppy. I, I'll have some fun, interesting stuff to talk about, so I think it's worth the choppiness. But this is a, a container, this is a mash ton. And this needs to be very temperature controlled. Your very basic homebrew setup, the starter is probably going to have more of that orange igloo cooler that you get from Home Depot. Well, this is a kind of a step up from that. I went with a big stainless steel because it's a lot easier to keep clean. Mash tun, went with a little thicker wall, but as you can see, I put this insulation around it, even in the lid here, which sits nice and tight. This guy keeps within like one degree for a solid hour, probably even more than that. But generally you mash for about an hour uh, at most. Most people don't even mash for that long because grains have gotten so much better. But anyway, a really cool and my favorite piece I have in this whole thing. And if you can't tell, I kind of sourced all of this as I've been doing this. I've been home brewing for about a decade or so and you get piece by piece. So I have a lot of stuff, but don't be overwhelmed. Uh, you don't have to go this big initially to start getting the idea, the feel for it. Make sure that you like it and enjoy it. And then you can do this. Uh, come in a little closer, Rachel. And you can see my solution for this is where you put all the grain. And you see right down here, this is a false bottom. So when you have all the grain in here with that hot water, turning those sugars into starch or start sorry start turning all the starches into sugars fermentable sugars uh, you don't want to take that grain down with you into the next tank which is the brew kettle uh, because you don't want to drink grain right and so that false bottom keeps all that grain there goes all the way down here into my big 20 gallon brew kettle so this has been the most recent addition to my oh not quite true my lovely wife for Father's Day got me this pump. Oh, my birthday, actually. Got me this pump, which I have yet to use because I don't have electricity down here. That's the only thing that I'm missing. But everything else is pretty awesome about this setup because right here, there's lots of water involved. I got a big drain right over there. So all my water gets to go right down in the drain. If you can't tell, there's a cat there too. Uh, if you can't tell, here, come with me over here. 
this actually was a barn. These were stalls for horses. So that's kind of cool, right? You got that. Well, Amy, so this is where the horses would be washed. Now it's where I wash my beer, sort of. Okay, so that's the idea. You heat up the water, you get it nice and hot, you have it set to a certain temperature here, which is where you essentially steep your grains. Kind of look at it like a, a big batch of tea almost that you're making. And then once it's turned all those starches into fermentable sugars, you bring it down here, you boil it, you get it nice and clean. You throw in your hops, you throw in any kind of additives you might think. That's where you throw in like cinnamon or vanilla or whatever. A lot of people put it into the boil kettle. And then right after that, it goes, goes into here. You could definitely fry a turkey or two and all of this stuff. Oh, thanks, TJ. Got a nice little uh, Old Navy special. Uh, but yeah, so let's go back to the very beginning, how you get those grains. You can look. That's a trick that you learn when you've been brewing for long enough. These are all the grains, which I would like to invite you. This might look familiar if you have seen any of our home brewing, the twice that we have done this. We have done brewing at Sporter X. That's why this is relevant. Should have said that in the very beginning. But we have brewed with our local love them bitter brothers brewery right next to us our neighbor and we've gotten to do a large scale brewing and so this is small scale brewing this is where i came from and this is what makes sense to me if you check out those videos which i recommend because they're fun and you can see us having fun it's definitely over my head just because the all the, the equipment is gigantic and everything they do all their pumps and all their temperature control is really cool but very confusing to me uh, but anyway you have your grains that look like that, you actually can have some specialty grains, which would be like this, like this pale chocolate. You want to go with something more like a, a porter or something a little darker. Uh, and then you can have other fun stuff like honey. These are going to give you all of your interesting flavors that give you the control. There are so many different types of malted barley that you can get. It makes it very exciting as a home brewer coming up with your own recipes, all the options available to you. Most people care more about hops because we're in an IPA world, we're in, a, in the time of IPAs. Uh, I like a little more, I don't know, I like a darker beer and I like some interesting additives. But then you have here, this is our grain mill. So that grain, as you see, it needs to be cracked, it needs to be opened up so you can get all that meaty goodness and convert the starch into sugar. And so you have to crack it. And I like to do that right before I throw it into my mash tun because it's the freshest. And so you start with that, throw it all in there, boil it all up, and then you got to cool it down. That's where this guy comes from. It's a heat exchange. So this goes into the boiling water, which cleans it right away. You have cold water go in, hot water comes out because you want to cool this down as quickly as possible. So when I learned home brewing, and then after, sorry, and then after you ferment and it gets all the beer that you want to drink it, then it goes into the keg. Or you can do bottles. I like kegs because it's a lot easier than messing with all the different bottles and then you have to bottle condition, whatever. But I started very humbly. We actually are in Escondido, which is kind of sort of the home site of Stone Brewery. If you haven't heard of Stone Brewery, they're a very major brewery in our area and, and across the, the country for sure. Uh, but they used to do this thing called Brewing University or Stone U, Stone University. And they did a home brewing class. And there are a few things that I picked up on that they said are very important for the new home brewer. And that's what I did. And I would recommend you do. And that is to go outside. There is a very easy way that you can do it inside, which is, well, I say easy. It's definitely cumbersome. But you can do it on your stove top. You boil a couple of gallons of water and then you do the whole brewing process there. And then you top it off at the end to give you five gallons because that's the typical yield for home brewing is five gallons. Uh, this I can do a little more. So I'm about 10 gallons. That's a question I get a lot. How much do you make? It's about 10 gallons. Uh, but the best practices was go outside, do the full boil, do a full five gallon batch outside and you can start simply with extract do not be afraid of all grain it's a little intimidating maybe because of all the equipment but just hopefully you can find somebody that you know do a lot of research there's lots of information out there like i mentioned so you can do all grain because it makes a huge difference in your overall product and just 
it's, it's a much better brewing experience because you feel like you really have a, a, a hand in making the beer. It's not like the beer made itself, which is kind of how it feels with extract. Uh, but yeah, boiling it outside, you want to cool it down as quickly as possible once it's done and just use glass carboys. That's where this guy comes in. So this is where you ferment. There are plastic containers that you can get to ferment in. The danger with those is when you are dealing with yeast and you are dealing with making your beer as tasty as possible, the thing that you want to make sure that you do is sanitize, 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 and make sure that you don't get that yeast infected with any of the other wild yeasts outside or any other bacteria because it'll ruin your beer. And that sucks because you just spent all that time and the money getting that beer going and it got wrecked. Well, that's a lot easier to keep clean with a glass container. If you have a plastic container, it gets a little cut in it. Bacteria can hide in there a lot more easily. And that's that can be hard to control. And so glass is a really good idea. Let's talk about a couple other questions that I get. Are we getting any questions, by the way? No, a lot of comments. A lot of comments. Hopefully, uh, they're all very kind to me because I have a very fragile ego. <laughs> so I actually got to brew beer on my birthday. You should check it out. Uh, oh, and quick, because I'm actually wearing the same pair. Uh, quick frame check. I am wearing the Canaan Strand. It's apparently perfect for brewing because it's just great here in sunny northern Escondido. And it's a little warm out, but overall very nice. But the Canaan Strand, check it out. Check out that ultra polarized lens because it's fantastic with that color control. Uh, but a couple of the questions that I get, like I said, the yield, how much do you make? The minimum is usually around three gal or five, five gallons. And then you can go up from there. Home brewers usually are around the five to 10 gallon mark. I'm doing 10 gallons these days. Uh, I do have a beer coming out that's hopefully good. We'll check that next week. Maybe we'll post a little pic. So check us out on Instagram. Like I said, we have a lot of other social media presences. And check us out there because we have uh, good stuff there. Maybe I'll throw in some uh, how I did with my beer last uh, last week. It was my birthday. But anyway, we, uh, sorry, other questions that I get would be the yield, how much it costs. Of course, that varies based on what you're making. One thing that I would recommend that I just started after doing this for so long is do a yeast starter because it can save you a lot of money. So you only have to buy one of those packs and then you grow it up versus my typical recipe I make calls for five packs and that starts getting very expensive. And so I grew it up and this time it was just a really good experience and I would highly recommend it. So save money that way. But I brewed actually the same beer that I brewed last year on my birthday, which I call the Crux. It's kind of a portery, very, very dark, but not as dense as a stout. Uh, I don't even know what you call it. I call it an American Porter because I don't know how to title my beers. I don't know enough about the different grains that go into the different styles. And so let's just call it a very dark beer. And hopefully it turns out as well as it turned out last year because I was very happy with it and uh, only made some minor tweaks. And so check us out on Instagram. Give us a little like and a follow so there'll be a follow-up and I'll talk about how that turned out. Maybe a little quick vid tasting video. Okay, so pricing varies drastically. If you do all grain, you can save some money. If you consider how much your yield is versus how much you're inputting. And so for me, I'd say a 10 gallon batch runs roughly 40 bucks so if you compare that to how much you spend on a 24 pack or a 48 pack it's definitely a, a some money saver there for you it's the obsidian beer yes indeed so it was kind of a themed beer and uh the obsidian that's the obsidian series i'll hopefully have more series to add to that collection uh, but yeah, I feel like I had some other questions that I get regularly and I'm not remembering them. Anybody have questions out there for me? I'm going to wait. I'm just going to stand here in silence okay, and wait. Yeah, yeah. When the, first time you brewed was. the first time I brewed would have been, I mean, probably a decade ago. I mean, you would know this, Rachel. It's probably about a decade ago in my backyard. Oh. Uh, another recommendation, like I said, this can get intimidating, obviously not my stand here, which is very underwhelming, but I will say I built this thing like five years ago, if not longer than that, it's been out in the brutal elements and it stood up just fine. You get the cheap wood at 
Home Depot or whatever, and you just drill it all together, and this thing will stand up to just about anything, probably except for fire, which you can see is right next to it. So be careful of that for sure. But you don't have to go crazy. If you look, what's fun about this guy right here, that's a 10-gallon pot, and this is the very first pot that we purchased. I went, with, I didn't mention this, I went with two friends at the time. We did the, the Beer University, the Stone U, and we right after that went to a kitchen supply store where you can get where they have uh, all this stuff for uh, the, the big, big kitchens out there. Uh, whatever the the commercial kitchen so commercial kitchen supply store you can get used semi used slightly loved stuff for a really good price and that's where we got this and it's still this is going to last I'll probably keep that forever and ever and ever because it's close to my heart right uh, so you can you can do this inexpensively very reasonably and it can be so dang much fun I would highly recommend you give it a try because there's really no reason to not right now right because you have time people have time get out there and enjoy it there are lots of ways that you can source the ingredients now you can get it online lots of really awesome places uh, i would recommend as much as you can if possible grind the grain or mill the grain rather uh, as late as, as you can but when you're first getting started you can have it sent to you already milled there are, there are very little obstacles to overcome, few obstacles to overcome. Oh, and sorry, get a good water filter or get good filtered water because water matters. For those of you that don't know, beer is comprised of four elements. If it's missing one of these elements, it's not beer. And that is water, malted barley, that's the grain, and then yeast and hops. So if it's missing one of those four ingredients, technically it's not beer. And there's a lot of interesting history behind that too. So let's get into that. Pull up a chair for about the next two hours. I'm going to go into the history of beer. No, I'm not going to do that. But there's a lot of really cool stuff about this hobby. Thank you for joining me. Uh, hopefully it was interesting. Leave some comments. Like I said, definitely subscribe and show us some love because we love you. We have glasses. We're still open. Our lab is still working and our opticians are still waiting to hear from you with any questions you may have. Again, follow us on our other platforms like Instagram, for instance, where you might see that follow up that I've only talked about like five times about my beer which probably will be next week thank you guys so much for joining us again subscribe send us that subscribe record of you subscribing and we'll send you some swag thank you so much